This video is brought to you in part by Just Games Rochester, LLC, Rochester, New York's friendly neighborhood game store. Check them out in the link in the description below. Hi everybody, I'm Rook and welcome to the table. I am here today for a special painting episode, partnering with my local game store, Just Games Rochester, to bring you the great 2020 Terrain Contest. This contest is being hosted by Just Games Rochester a very creative and innovative contest that is running for the rest of October, where you are dropping off painted terrain at their store as entry to a contest so that they build up their terrain library for events that they have down the road when events start opening back up and there are prizes for well-painted pieces of terrain. So obviously, um, as I go through my painting journey, I wanted to get in on this and paint some terrain with you guys. The categories for the Great 2020 Terrain Contest are Best Painted, best customization, most functional, which terrain pieces can uh, kind of have some mechanical differences, and overall most excellent, spectacular, totally awesome and pretty. Pretty sure that's trademarked by them. <laughs> so I'm partnering with them to paint some terrain today. They did supply me with some terrain to use and I'll be painting that and all terrain that I paint, I will be donating back to their store as well as submitting my entry into the great 2020 terrain contest. A couple additional rules for this contest is that all entries will be enshrined in the Just Games Terrain Library for use in store. Um, they recommend that you put your name or try and put a little tag or a signature on your terrain so that they can tell, you know, it's your personal flair to the terrain when they use it in store, it'll be cool to have. Um, no foam terrain, they really want hard plastic, foam doesn't hold up as well. Terrain kits are acceptable like the one I'll be painting today. Um, repaints of pre-painted terrain are fine and also previously painted terrain in the past is fine as long as you are making that your submission. No entering another person's terrain. So they want you to paint it yourself. It'll be like a name card that you fill out with your submission. Um, they also may add additional prizes based on the response of uh, the pieces of terrain that are submitted. Um, there may be honorable mentions, there may be additional prizes. So guys, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity, I think, for prizes if there's a lot of response to this. You can't win more than one category, so try and focus on one particular thing or just do your best and, and submit something. That's what I'm gonna do. And yes, you do have to put your real name, uh, email, and a phone number on a note with your entry. So you drop that right off at the store. Probably don't wanna go larger than a foot by a foot with your terrain pieces. Final thing for the great 2020 terrain contest is that this contest runs through October 31st, which is uh, probably about 15 days left at the time of this video, and prizes. Each category has a prize with a $100 store credit. The overall winner will get $150 in store credit. So if that's motivation for you guys to paint some terrain and get it in, then let's get started. You can submit pieces of buildings, huts, containers. What I'll be painting for you guys today is the armored containers from Games Workshop, okay? This was supplied to me by Just Games and all that I will be painting from this, I will be donating back to the store. How the armored containers work is they come in sprues like this, okay? So this, there are three of these sheets in this box. I think the box is like 60 to $80 or something like that. And what it includes is one container crate, four regular crates, and then three barrels that all come together. This sheet, you know, from a Warhammer standpoint, is a 40-point fortification um, piece. Additionally, the container has the, uh, the storm bolts that you can attach on each side of the container that can be used to shoot from in a game of Warhammer. So this is what I'll be painting today. I already painted one of these just to practice and see, and uh, I think it turned out pretty well. So here's the container that I painted the other night. We have this dirty green. See the storm bolts up there. There's the stripe and just, uh, I really like painting terrain because it really allows you a chance to kind of just get grimy with it, you know? So here's my uh, sample crate. And then I also painted some smaller crates and barrels there. But I hope you guys enter. I'm certainly excited to get started. I hope you guys take something away from the following painting video. I will be painting this. So this is not primed. So we'll have to go through the priming process and I'm going to go ahead and prime it before I cut it from the sprue. So I will prime, go through the cutting process, glue, and then let's get started painting. All right guys, so we are outside now, beginning the priming process. I have these gripped with a pair of pliers and I'm starting with my black primer. This is just the Rust-Oleum uh, combo primer that you get for like $3 at Home Depot. Applying it to the front and back of all of the pieces on the sprue, holding it with the pliers there. So I'm going for the black first. 
Similar to like you saw with the Goblin Army, I am priming with the black first, getting it nice and coated. Uh, don't have to worry about obscuring too much detail here with the terrain as opposed to a miniature. And now I have my white primer, same brand, and I'm going through the front and back as well to try and achieve that gray look. And there we go, and we are ready to paint. Okay, so we're at the table, and the next step is gonna be we're going to cut the pieces out of the sprue. So we have it all primed from the priming process. And now we're just going to use these wire cutters here. These are from Husky. Of course, there are official hobby cutters you can use, but I find that these ones work just fine. They have that really nice. So just going to go ahead and start cutting the pieces out. Okay, so we have all the pieces cut, and now what we're going to do before we start painting is we're going to stick them all together. So, we're going to use glue for this. I have just a generic brand of glue that I'm using today. I got this from Home Depot. Of course, Citadel and um, other paint suppliers sell specific glue, um, especially the really thin ones that gets in the little pieces. So, um, those are good for minis. This one, we're doing terrain, so don't really need to get in too many small cracks. I have the instructions here, and it actually kind of gives you like a little Lego step-by-step -step instruction on how to glue them together, right? So you can see that here. Barrels are pretty straightforward. Crates actually don't glue at all. It's just this is it. You know, I see the bottom here, but it's just the crate. There you go. So I'm going to start by gluing the barrels together. Now there are three sides that have skulls, and there are three sides that have uh, wings. So I'm going to do a wing and a skull because they come together just like this. So we take the glue and I'll just apply it down the sides. Okay, barrels are done. Crates. Oh, well, just want to scan all the parts first just to see if there's anything that needs. You can see that there are some sprue spots here which you can easily kind of shave off with a uh, with a box cutter or a hobby knife. Always cut away from you. I just have a Husky uh, box cutter here. Kind of shave those pieces right off. Okay, and you can also use a simple file just to kind of put it right in the right spot there, smooth it right out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all my pieces. Okay, I have all my pieces kind of cut and filed the way I want them. So now let's continue with the gluing. The only thing that's left to glue is the large crate. And actually before I glue this, there's something that I'm going to want to paint first. In the uh, last model that I did, I did not paint first. I didn't need to paint first because what I'm gonna try and do in this one is I'm gonna try and go for the open container here. So, in order to have that look good, I want to paint the inside of the container first before it gets closed off. I'm going to paint it this Rackarth flush. So we're going to go ahead and put some of that on the palette. You have the palette cam there. And let's get some of the Rackarth flush on the palette. Let's paint the inside of this thing. There we go. This is the wet palette here. Gonna thin our paint nice and wet. Now you notice that this paint, this particular paint's a little tacky. You can see kind of the spots there. I hope that comes through in the in the palette cam. Because uh, you can see how just kind of utilizing the wet palette, you kind of smooth it out. See? And then that makes tackling your piece much better. Now, there I don't have a base holder for this because this is uh, terrain. So I'm just gonna be holding it by hand, but this is the inside and I'm just gonna start painting. Best part about terrain, a lot of the terrain that you paint, is that you don't have to be so detail oriented, especially not right off the bat. You can really just slap it on. I'm gonna upgrade to a bigger brush actually. Let's get this brush here. This is random brush from the basement and this 
I think that this will really get in the cracks there. Another bad, another thing about painting terrain is that I don't mind leaving a tiny bit of the primer because the primer that I try to accomplish usually leaves it like a gray and it kind of looks like almost a little bit of as rusted. Like you can see even like this corner here, you can see that it, it doesn't necessarily look out of place if I left it that way. Okay. So there we go. Just gonna do that four more times. It's gonna need a lot. That's another thing with terrain is you uh, you need more paint. This is not a mini. This is not a mini figure. You need more paint on the palette. And Rackard Flesh is a, is a color that I think we're gonna use a lot here. It's because I like it as a as a starter color to then apply some uh, some additional mixes to to kind of darken it, lighten it, etc. And I'm not worried about obscuring any detail here. As you can see, it's covering pretty well, but still got to get a, just a little more pressure on there just to get through those cracks. Okay, there's two pieces. Going on to these. So these are the outsides, and so we're going to paint the inside that color as well. See how it's kind of really not trying to put too much on here. Just the way it comes off the brush, it almost is sort of, it gives you that kind of darker, like very worn look. Get a little more here and I you can see just really wide strokes just very very casual here okay and this is the inside so a little worn dinged up stuff coming in and out of the container there you go <clears throat> we have our four sides we are just gonna paint the doors here especially because one of them you know what, one of them we probably don't have to paint, because unless you look all the way back into it, you're not going to see it. But one of them definitely is going to be open. We want that painted. There we go. All right. We got our four doors. This is the one that I want in front. Okay. Clean this brush. Okay, our container pieces are dry. Let's slap them together. So the instructions demonstrate this very clearly, but I am familiar with doing this the previous time, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we have this, it's gonna insert right into here. It's gonna form this, you can see this is the bottom. So I will go ahead and apply the glue. You can apply it inside the holes, or you can apply it to these pieces. I like applying it to these pieces. I find that it sticks better. All right. Give it a 10 second hold. Okay, apply the glue to the other side. Okay, and then this piece is going to come right across the top and you can see there are actually little indents that it's going to collapse on here. So I'm going to put glue on all of these little indents. Okay, there's our doorless container. Let's put the door that's going to be shut on. That is going to go this way. So here, just going to be glue here, here and in these two places, and we'll press it right on. There's our door side, right there. Now this is the one where we're going to want the door to be open. So that will open like this. So I'll put glue here and have it come right to the bottom. And like that, we have our open container terrain. And the inside is already painted, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, looking pretty good. This one's going to be a little more sensitive than that one over there with the with the door open. But we're not done with the gluing yet. 
We have uh, these little radios or keypads are going to go right here on the side. There are four kind of hooks that go in on the four corners and it's like makes them stackable. And then there are the um, there are the bolters here. So piece looks like this and then two pieces slap onto it right here as you can see and then it actually has a little peg that you're not supposed to glue and you kind of place right there and then you can kind of maneuver it based on the game you're playing. So cue epic montage of me gluing all this together. Okay we are all glued up this thing is ready to be painted. I'm going to keep the guns so separate but they would mount right here. I'm going to paint those separately just find that it's easier especially because now it is time to base coat our large container and uh, this is where it's a lot of fun because you can really slap a lot of paint on it. I painted the last one like a dark green and I think that I want to paint this one like a Mad Maxi kind of orange today. So we're gonna see how that looks. So I have the rat skin flesh and Rhinox hide from Citadel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a crap ton of rat skin, rat skin flesh onto the palette and then I'm gonna apply just a little bit of Rhinox hide to, to kind of darken it and kind of muddy it, you know? A little, uh, little dirty container. So let's put some of this on the palette. We're gonna need a lot of this. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I may use this color for some of the smaller crates also, but let's just get a bunch here. And what does this look like on the container? Okay. So, it's pretty much, that's already pretty good. It's already pretty good looking. It's dark enough to start. We can make it just a little darker though. So let's grab just a touch of the Rhinox hide. Let's see if I can grab it with this larger brush. Just a touch, Ooh, just a little more. Okay, wet palette cam. Let's see the magic happen with the mixing. See it darken just a little bit here. And then, you know what? It doesn't have to be completely one color. I, that, that's what I found with the other one is that some parts are greener than others, some parts are browner than others. This is a great color though. This is a very sort of dusty kind of Mad Max color that I'm looking for. So let's take this and let's go to the let's go to the container and let's just start putting this on. All right. You know, I think this can be just a little darker, although that's already a pretty good color. Let's do just a touch more brown. I mean, the thing can be so many different colors. Let's put just a little more brown in there. Yeah, that's going to really darken it. Maybe some of these spots are going to be where it was just a little dirtier, you know? Yeah, that's that's nice and dirty. Let's see what that looks like. Let's put that kind of over here. Yeah, look at that. Very subtle difference. Very subtle. But a little dirtier. Okay, let's go ahead and call that base coated. So you can see we have some spots where you can still see the primer just a little bit. Some spots that look lighter than others. You got the rack earth flesh on the inside, but even like right here, you know, some spots where it looks like maybe it's rusted off. That's why I wanted the primer to be kind of a gray because if something comes through, it looks like it's the natural metal. And, you know, these containers have been out in the elements, so they are taking all sorts of wear. So I think that this is a pretty good base coat. It looks very kind of rugged, uh, like it's been out somewhere for a while. Let's get some rack earth flesh again. Scoop it out here. I'm gonna kind of put it over here. Get a little of the brown. Little Rhinox hide. Drop it in. All right, we can have some fun with this one. So <clears throat> we want dirt to splash this container. So let's just sort of, let's just sort of kind of hit like here, maybe here, 
I like it here or along the sides here, you know. Just sitting in the dirt. Maybe some kind of came up onto the sides. Really could do this however you want to do it. You know, this door is filthy. And then what I like to do is almost kind of take most of the paint off it where it's almost a dry brushing, dry brushing situation. And I just kind of dry brush the door, you see? Kind of has some dirt splatted on it. This one's a lot dirtier than the last one. Let's get it all over. Dusty. Okay. We got some of the dirt aesthetic on there. Let's not forget, give me a give me a bit of the rigid leather brown here. This is a little lighter than the Rhinox hide, the uh the rigid leather brown from the Nosaurus Underdark paint set. Let me just kind of mix that in. Try and get most of it off the brush. And then just maybe kiss the inside with where people were walking. Let's see if you can see that. Right, like just like that. People have been walking in and out of this thing. Perfect. And then maybe even uh, put, the, put just a drop of brown right here. And maybe just a couple spots of brown. Right there, right? Give it a kind of muddy aesthetic. Yeah, see that? All right. It's looking good so far. All right, so now let's try and add a little bit of accent here. A couple things that we can do kind of right off the bat. Right here, just take some onto this brush and let's just get these skulls. Okay, we got the skulls there, that's pretty easy. Let's get some underdark gray here. Underdark gray going right here. Let's pick up one of these brushes. And what I'm gonna do with this underdark gray, get into it. I'm just gonna go over the lines that we see that are prominent here. And now I think what I want to do, we got the gray down. Now what I want to do is I want to take some of this matte white that's from the Army Painter. Put that in with the gray. I think we're done with the gray. Let's, <laughs> let's get crazy. We got the white in there. We're going to need a little more gray, I think. Mix it up. This is going to be much lighter. This should be much lighter. Yeah, look at that. Really, really lightens it. Not white, but uh, it really lightens that gray. That's a really nice color. We're going to do a little more highlighting here with this. You know what, maybe I'll put some kind of down, down these sides here. There we go. <clears throat> Still like that. And then let's uh, let's grab the lines on this door. That should look nice. Got the uh, got the bars there, and anywhere else we want to splash it. Let's do that. You can get as complex as you'd like with it. We could do so much more. And of course, it's a, I mean, this is terrain. So you can take that white and you can write something here on the side. You can write a number, you can write a name, you could write anything you'd like, any sort of signature you want to put on your piece. 
definitely you can do that on terrain. Okay, we have some brown here. Can I just add a little yellow to that? Ooh, that's a lot of yellow. We have the Ancient Mummy Yellow from the Underdark paint set. Grab some brown. I'm going to need some brown here. It's going to be really yellow. That actually looks pretty muddy. I, I do want it to be a little bit of yellow. There is some yellow there. What I was looking for was uh, I was going to paint these lights. It's got these kind of lights here. So if we just... Oh yeah, that comes through yellow here. Just touch these these lights. You see that? See that a little bit? Oh, putrid slime, also from Underdark. Putrid slime, right here. I'm just gonna touch the uh, the keypad on the side of the container with this. Just a touch. Just a touch. I'm trying to steady my hand while also keeping this in the in the camera. This could really be done at any time. I think that what I want to do though, I think that what I want to do though is um, I'm going to add a couple stripes to it, kind of like how I did the other one. So let's dry this. Let's paint a couple stripes on this. You know what I think is going to look really good with this? I think is going to be Cantor Blue. Blue and orange. Natural compliments. Look at me. I know the color wheel. This is going to be the brush that I'm going to use, I think, for for these stripes. This is the Army Painter Wargamer Monster. Ooh. Got that from Just Games. Anyway, a little Cantor Blue and a little, where did I put you, Rhinox Hide? Similar to what we did with the orange, I think that we're going to achieve something great here if we get the right amount of, um, right amount of brown with the blue. And we don't need too much of this. So let's grab some of the, well, that's a nice blue. It's a beautiful blue. Okay, Cantor Blue, already looking solid. Brown isn't going to do too much to this, but let's see. I want to just dull it a little bit, you know, make it look worn. Use this brush, grab some of the brown, put it in with the blue. Let's we'll see what it do. All right, behold, get ready for some stripes, guys. All right, these are very hit or miss with me, um, but let's try it. So I'm just going to go down here. Pass the skull down here. Up the side. It's got to be a little wider. A little wider. All right. We're going to try and clean that one up. Let's put the second one in while that one dries. Okay, we have we have our stripes, but um, we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to clean those up a little bit. I mean, in reality, you think about how these crates were constructed, and and these were these weren't these probably weren't perfect on those, right? Those are our stripes. Stripes work in progress for sure. But just showing you just ex kind of some things that you can do with the crate. Obviously, you can do. Whatever you want to do. I think that we, uh, for the purpose of this video, I think that we're good with this container. So the last thing that I'll do just to complete the container is let's give it a wash. And there was one that I used yesterday that I enjoyed. This is from the Army Painter Quick Shade set. This is mid brown we'll be using to wash this. Let's just put a little bit here. Let's grab, I like this flat brush for washing. Let's just see what that looks like. A little brown. Yeah, I think that'll do just nicely. So let's <laughs> let's put a bunch more on. Grab it and start brushing. So the wash is gonna find the natural shadow in the piece. And as you can see, you can kind of dictate how much you want to leave in a place. Like if I put a bunch right here, that's going to leave a pretty big shadow. If I want that to be accented, fine. Otherwise, it still stays light enough and wet enough where I can kind of move it around however I'd like. As you can see, as you can see in that light there, that line is still pretty well defined from a shadow perspective. So 
So that will be a nice touch. And you don't want to be too precise with your washes. Some people know how to work it just right. Um, but really you're accomplishing what you want to accomplish by liberally just kind of applying it to the whole piece. As you can see, just kind of just kind of darkens the whole thing, makes it a little dirtier, gives it some uh, some character, gives it some shadow. All right, and ta-da, there is our finished container. So we're not done, of course. Let's go ahead and paint the rest of our 40, 40 points. So we have two rectangular crates, two kind of squarish crates, and then three barrels. So I'm moving the container over to the side really quickly. I think we can paint two of these crates this uh, dirty orange. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to grab a little more orange, a little more of the rat skin flesh, put it right here. And let's do one rectangle, one square, so. All right, two crates down. Let's get crazy. Let's put more colors in the mix. We have the Lauren Forest Green from Citadel some of that over here let's see what this looks like yeah but uh, let's have just a tinge of this brown to it let's make these a little darker the orange does a good job at already being kind of dark looking let's add a little brown to that let's see it doesn't take much brown to really change the color I have a little bit of orange on this still you know what let's mix it all in <laughs> let's mix it all in the orange shouldn't add too much to it anyway yeah, I didn't clean the brush. Look at that. Common mistake. We are making a little mud. What's that look like? Yeah, that's like a toxic, very toxic color here. Very dark. Look at that. Look at that color. This is like a, yeah, this is a swamp green. Okay, happy accidents right there. That's a that's an interesting looking crate. And we got a little bit of a lighter green and the darker green. Then we have the oranges over here. All right, let's paint those wings and then we'll be done with these crates. So for the green ones, um, actually let's start with the orange ones. The orange ones will be easy. Let's just make these the rack red flesh. All right, well, let's go to these wings. And there you go, nice and simple. Nothing too complicated. We'll give these a wash too. Let's grab this one here. All right, there's those. And then for these, let's do, oh, it should be up here. We're gonna do a gold for these. We're gonna do the Retributor Armor. This is a very thin kind of gold color. You'll see when I put it on the palette that it uh, it's very thin. Sometimes it doesn't always cooperate. Put that right there, okay? It's a very nice color, but uh, it has a tendency to be very thin. Let's grab some of this and let's see how it does on this wing. Oh, this one's been, this is much better than the other night. Ta-da! And we got a little bit left on the brush. Heck, let's go back over here. And let's just, uh, let's give us, let's give this some gold. Gold here. A few gold there. A few gold there. And just little details like that. Really, that's what makes terrain so fun. Is you can really just kind of put Within reason, you can kind of put stuff anywhere from a color perspective. 
Let's get a little more here. And we'll just kind of do one up here. Yeah, some gold sticking out over here and over here. Hmm. A little more depth. And maybe there's uh, maybe there's some gold kind of running down the side here. Oh, it's coming into contact with some of that. Uh, there we go. Look at that. Maybe under here is kind of a gold. Coming into contact with a little bit of the um, the wash. Yeah, I like that. Just little stuff, little, little splashes like that, you know? Let's wash these crates. Moving swiftly along, washing the crates. What do I want to use? I think we can use the same mid brown. Bump the camera there. Palette cam, I hope everything's okay over there. Let's use that mid brown on these crates. Grab a little bit of mid brown. And you can go back and put a second coat on these because you can kind of see some brush strokes here, but um, it, because it's terrain, um, it, the precision and kind of some of those little nuances are very forgiving, as opposed to like a polished new coat of armor on a miniature figure. Because with the terrain, you know, especially with, with what I'm doing here with the containers, you gotta take into effect the fact that these have probably been out in the elements, they're weathered, they're worn. So it kind of lets me off the hook with a lot of stuff, to be honest. So I can really just kind of be a little more, not reckless, but just a little more casual with it. All right, look at that. You can see how it kind of defines the crates a little better there. Very nice. Now, I don't know if I want to do a brown for this. Let's hit it with the military shader. Let's see what that looks like. From the Army Painter Quick Shade set, the military shader. With that right here, it looks pretty dark, right? I mean, it's green technically, but it's pretty dark. With the military shader over here, let's see what it does. Ooh, we didn't dry the uh, the gold on this. It actually just kind of moved around the crate a little bit, but that's pretty cool actually. Yeah, you know, some of the gold was uh, still wet and kind of flecked onto the box there, and it doesn't look bad. Like I said, pretty forgiving, pretty forgiving. This is why, you know, if you can take something away from this, it's that uh, it really, really anybody can paint. Anybody can certainly paint terrain. Minis are very intimidating. I understand that for sure. But the terrain is a blast. You just slap paint on it. As long as you have a general color scheme and you kind of know what you're going for and you have the tools, then there you go. All right, and there are the crates. So, a few completed parts so far. Just looking for the barrels. And the barrels, interesting enough, are um, flammable. And there's actually something in the rules that says, let's see, here's where it kind of describes what we're looking at. And it actually says that the fuel drums can ignite and you can suffer damage from it. So, what kind of fuel drums ignite? What color are they usually? Let's go for a red here. My reds are kind of limited. So I have the succubus red from the Underdark paint set. Let's put that here. But look at how bright that is. That's very bright. And I think that I want just a touch. It's almost pink. Let's do a touch of the brown here. Let's see what that looks like. Let's just see what it looks like. Use this brush. Yeah, these are going to be, oh, it's kind of, it's forming like a very dull red. Let's use it. Let's take this and go to the barrels. Yeah, that's a very dark red, very worn red, like that. Okay, so we have our barrels all painted with the red. And while we wait for that to dry, let's go back to our crates and the wash has dried. And let's just add a little highlight to these crates. So what I'm gonna use here is I'm actually gonna use this kind of underdark gray mixed with the white that we had. And really all you want to do here is just kind of go along the lines. 
This gives it that extra little highlight. So it kind of stands out a little more. You can do it kind of all around the lines here. And then what I also do is I do it around kind of the lines below it. Just like that. Nice and simple. All right. Final little touch on our crate. Okay, and that's all the crates. You can see a little bit of that kind of silver white on all of them. Gives them just that little extra detail that they need. So now these crates are officially done. And the last thing that we can do is finish up the barrels. So the barrels are this very dark red right now. And what I want to do is let's make the middle stripe. The um, Let's make the middle stripe. Let's make it this white that we were just using. I say white, it's that under dark gray and white. Let's go to the middle here. All right, barrels have the white stripe and the red drum. Two more things I want to do with the barrels and then we'll call it a wrap. Give me some of this Succubus Red. Just want to touch a little bit of it and go around. Just give some highlights here. Last thing I want to do here is what uh, I'll use this brush, dip into my Contributor Armor, the gold. And let's touch the wings on the barrels. Just looking for that pop of gold right here. Just like so. And I can do the skull on the back of the gold also. All right, the barrels are red. So I find that sticking kind of with that color for the wash works best. So we have a red tone. Army Painter Quick Shade set, guys. This uh, it gave you a lot. For not very much. I really thought I was going to use like two different types of washes, but I find that I'm using quite a few. So, it's been good. Dip into the red tone and just, it's going to really stick on these uh, on these rungs here, you can see. It's going to really stay there. It's going to look nice. And that's it. This is one full sprue of container terrain for Warhammer. One more thing I forgot. I realized that I'm looking at this container. I'm like, wow, this doesn't look very menacing, does it? I need to paint the storm bolters. So let's go ahead and do that quick and then we'll be done. But all the terrain pieces looking pretty nice. Just need to paint the weaponry here. This is going to be pretty simple. What I'm going to do here is a coat of the uh, Rackarth flesh. And then I'm going to come through and paint the barrels with a Druger metal. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. All right, let's uh, let's paint these suckers. Ooh, I can also incorporate just a little bit of the uh, the gold, probably into the vents there. Okay, we have the Rackarth Flesh there on the uh, Storm Bolter to start. Now let's take a little bit of the Drugar Metal here, which is like a black, but it has a metallic quality to it. Put a little bit on the palette. Look at how big this palette is. We have so much space. How many colors have we used? I've lost track. Dip into our metal, and we're just painting the barrels here. Okay, bolters have the metal on them. And then the last thing I want to do, dip into the gold, and let's just grab the vents. 
Just a little extra color. There we go. Nice and easy. Now we'll dry, and then we'll wash. I think I'm going to wash this with the same wash that I did the container. A little bit more mid-brown wash. Probably really don't need that much at all. Last piece. We grab this flat brush and let's just make it a little worn, make it a little dirty. And with that, we are done. We have completed our 40 point fortification set. Well, one sprue. Like I said, in the container that I received, there were three. So you can do this three times. But let's just kind of put these here and maybe these kind of stacked here. All right, crates, barrels kind of clustered around here. Let's pop these guns on. So these do have pegs. Really not much. Put it right in like that. And on the other side. There we go. And it doesn't recommend that you glue these because they can they can actually kind of swivel however you'd like it. And they are guns that you can shoot with in Warhammer. So that's pretty cool. But that is it, guys. That is my terrain submission. Um, I don't know which one I like better, the one I just did or the one that I did the other night. Um, and I do have one more, which I think I'm probably going to stream that, guys. That'd be on twitch.tv slash rook's table. I think maybe that's going to be Saturday. I'll probably do it in the next week because I do want to get that last one done because I'm actually pretty happy with, with the outcome of some of these. So I, I enjoy the terrain painting a lot. And I hope you guys do too. I hope this encourages you guys to pick up some terrain and uh, compete and submit, make a submission to this uh, great 2020 terrain contest that Just Games is hosting. You can drop it off anytime between now and October 31st. You know, like I said, you can use something that you had already painted in the past. You can paint over something new and submit that however you want to do it. Really, the store is looking to gain more terrain pieces so that when the time comes to reopen for events, they're going to have this crazy, crazy battlefield of terrain. It's going to look really cool. So, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button and, of course, subscribe for more. And I will catch you guys around. See ya.